How's it going everybody? Gunner here. Uh, another impromptu video. Uh, slightly prepared this time. It's very technical. This is going to be like the nerdiest video on fly lines you've ever seen. Um, <laughs> and so I have some notes so hopefully I don't get lost because it's not all up here. I haven't done math like this in like 12 plus years. Uh, but all the engineer guys who watch my videos, I think you'll dig this. Um, but the previous post, and this is just a continuation of it, had to do with uh, kind of modern marketing of fly lines and the statement, you know, what does it mean if a fly is two lines heavy? And is that overlining or overloading your rub? The simple answer is no. Uh, and we're gonna get to that. But based on the comments, um, I, I really wanna continue this discussion and make sure that we're all on the same page. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down the AFTM table, uh, what it actually is, what the information is actually telling you because it's not for you the tables not for you the tables for fly line manufacturers and we're gonna to get to that um, and so that's the first question that you need to understand what does the AFTM table actually tell you what does it actually tell you so if you look up the table I'll try to make some room so I can superimpose that with video editing skills but there's only three variables that we have we have our length, which is fixed at 30 feet. We have the rod weight category, which is going to be uh, a composite of two different things. We're going to have density and we're going to have diameter, which is we're going to use radius for this. And then you have the output, which is the mass. And what you have to understand, this table is not telling you how heavy the head of your fly line should be. That nowhere in the table does it say that. Nowhere in the table does it say, hey, you need a six weight line, guess what? The head should be 160 grains plus or minus eight. It's not what it says. Now, back in the day, fly line tapers used to be level, right? The double taper lines, the weight forward lines, they had a level, consistent, uniform diameter belly. So the whole point of this AFTM system, you chop off the front taper, you take the first 30 feet of it, you weigh it. We have our length, we have our mass. In the middle, we have this weird category called six weight. That's just, it's just like a six weight. What is a six weight? Now, you can do a bunch of math. I've done a bunch of math. I'll even put this in the description for all you nerdy engineers who want to know this. But it's, it's, it's the simplest thing you can think of, right? We have a cylinder. We have a uniform belly. We have a cylinder, which is going to be pi r squared times your length. So we've taken a cross-sectional surface area. Pi r squared, we took, we chopped a fly line, we took the circle, we have the radius, which is actually what we're going to solve for. This is the whole point of the table. The whole point of the table is not how heavy your head should be. The whole point of the table is the diameter of a six weight line. What is the diameter of a six weight line? And it's fixed relative to the density of the material used to create it. That's all AFTM is. It's a, it's a chart that tells you diameter of fly line relative to density used to create the volume. It has nothing to do with head weight. Absolutely nothing to do with how heavy the head should be to load a fly rod. Nothing. Okay, so we have this fancy equation, right? <clears throat> we got pi r squared. We have our surface area of a circle. We're extrapolating that out through our length, which is 30 feet. And then at the end, way over here at the equal sign, on the other end of that equal sign, we have our mass prefixed by the table, 160 grains plus or minus eight. So we can take all of that volume, we can divide our mass by it, and guess what you get? You get your density. You get density. Let me make sure. Mass divided by volume equals density. No way! That's so cool. Mass divided by volume equals density. Now here's the thing. Density is just a symbol and it's a word, but the fly line manufacturers know what the density is. They're not actually solving for the density. It's not how this works. What they do is they re-flip everything around. You get uh, essentially what they're solving for is your radius. You have your mass divided by pi times 30 times density. Then you can take the square root and you can find the radius. You can multiply by two. You can find out the diameter. The whole point of the table the table is an equation. The fly line manufacturers have a fixed length, 30 feet. They supply the density of the material that they're using to build up the volume of the fly line. They can then solve for the radius. And they have a fixed parameter of what is the diameter of a fly line of a six weight. 
What is the diameter of a fly line of a seven weight? What is the diameter of a fly line for an eight weight in a floating line class at a specific density so that it floats? Or it's an intermediate, they change the density, change the diameter. Or it's a sink three, change the density, change the diameter. Or it's a sink six. So every time they change the molecular density, which is going to affect the specific gravity relative to water, which is going to impact sink, sink rate, they get a new diameter output so they know how thick to manufacture the fly line. That thickness is what is fixed in the table as the line class, six weight. So the whole point of this table, I know this is super long and nerdy, the whole point of the table, it has nothing to do with head weight, it has nothing to do with how heavy your fly line should be on the rod weight that you're throwing. All it does is solve for the diameter of the fly line relative, relative, to the density of the material used to create it. That's all it does. Now, let's go back. Let's assume you have a double taper fly line manufactured on an AFTM standard two spec scale. So we're gonna have a six weight diameter. Did you hear me? A six weight diameter fly line. It's gonna be uniform in belly forever for 100 feet as a double taper fly line. Now let's say you start casting that. At 10 feet, your, your rod's underloaded. At 20 feet, it's underloaded. At 30 feet, it's still underloaded. Do you understand me? At 40 feet, it's getting close. At 45, 46, 47 feet, we hit this wonderful window of maximal performance where the rod is behaving the best. It's loading up. You can feel it, and yet it's still responsive and crisp in throwing the line very efficiently. So we've hit a point of maximal efficiency where we've essentially, because it's level, the more we carry, the heavier it gets until the mass and the performance of the fly line rod, sorry, hit an equilibrium of perfection. This is all hypothetical, but work with me here. As you carry more, 55, 60, 65, Performance starts to go down a little bit because the line gets heavier and heavier and heavier. It starts to bend too much. You start to get way too much arc and way too much casting length and all this fun stuff. But, I mean, that's what happens. That's what happens. So you could take a double taper line with a uniform cylinder fixed at an AFTM standard diameter. And you could cast it until you felt like you got the maximum performance, which might be 45, 46 feet. Then you chop 45, 46 feet, you put it on a grain scale, and you say, how heavy is that head? Oh, it's 230-ish grains? Great. So I want 230-ish grains to load a modern six-weight fly rod. Now my head, if it's 45 feet long, I can use an AFTM standard diameter fly line to achieve that much weight. I can achieve that much weight with a true-to-spec six-weight line. But we ain't going to do that because we've gotten a lot smarter and we know that a uniform cylinder belly is not the most efficient way to shoot line or impact and, and deal with and interact with huge air resistant waterlogged flies that are dragging on our system and we need to make this thing shorter, shorter, shorter. Now the only way to make it heavier while shorting the length is to use a higher diameter line. And if you look at like a Rio outbound short, there is, I, I drew a picture of it, dude. There's a, a rear cylinder, a mid belly cylinder, a front cylinder, and then a front cone. There's literally four different uh, uh, volumes that they would have to calculate the mass for and add them up. They're literally using a six weight line, a seven weight line, a, a nine weight line to generate the 235 grains in a 30 foot window. So if people see 235, they look at the AFTM chart and they go, oh, they're using a nine weight line on a six weight. No, I thought my six weight was actually a six weight, but it's a nine weight. Oh, I'm ruined. I've never caught a fish on a six weight. What am I going to do? Like, good grief, man. That's not what the table's telling you. That's not what the table is telling you. All it is is fixing diameter relative to density of material. That's all it's doing. The head weight, there's no table for it as far as I'm concerned, which is why I supplied one to you that I have found over the course of like 12 years of being a streamer junkie to be fairly darn accurate, which is 200 grains for a six weight, 
plus about 15. It's just easier to remember 200. But 200, six weight, 250, seven, 308 weight, 359, 410 weight, 450, 11, 512. It just goes up in these 50 grain increments. It goes up in 50 grain increments for the head weight. No one cares anymore what the diameter of a six weight line is. It doesn't matter. It's obsolete information. I only care about the amount of weight outside the rod tip, which is gonna be my head because I'm in a still water distance casting setting. So I'm gonna carry the head. I wanna know how heavy that head is to get the maximum performance bend, load, and unload of my fly rod. So when they say it's two lines heavy, the only information that's being communicated to you is they're using a diameter that's two lines thicker to generate the mass needed in a shortened system to get the maximum performance out of your fly rod because it's the shortened head that can load up quick, uses less false cast, and can maintain its momentum to carry a 10-inch beast fly 100 feet to distance, which you can't do with a uniform cylindrical Taper. You can't do it. Oh, man. That was a little heated. I got a little intense there. Forgive me. Um, man, this is some nerdy stuff. I ho hopefully, you just found it interesting, but fly lines are not level anymore. The diameter of the fly line is irrelevant information. The AFTM standard only outputs the diameter of the fly line relative to the density of the material. It does not tell you the head weight. It does not tell you how heavy the head should be to load specific rods. That information is completely useless to you. You shouldn't, as a consumer, even look at the AFTM table for any reason. There's no reason to look at it. As far as streamer fishing is concerned, use the 6 weight 200 plus 50 to eternity and you will be close enough ballpark that you will really appreciate your gear. The one thing you need to look for as a streamer fisherman is how long the head is, which you want very short and compact. That's all you care about. I want a 30 foot head that hits that 200 plus 50 grain scale all the way to eternity. That's what I want. Now, of course, within that 30 feet, there's different tapers that are gonna have different attributes. That's for a different video. But that's what I got for you guys. Sorry that this was intense. Uh, hopefully it really hit home some useful information to you and uh, yeah I don't know what we'll do next but <laughs> uh, I probably will not be this wound up for it <clears throat> and by the way if Fleet Farm doesn't have it you don't need it <laughs>